Good evening and welcome to this service of Evensong on the Sunday next before Lent. We begin by singing hymn number 306 to be found towards the back of the larger red book. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, number 306. We continue our service on page 16 of the prayer book. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, sitting or kneeling and saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and diazars of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. 
according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. The psalm tonight is Psalm number two. You'll find it on page 347 of the prayer book, Psalm two.
Please sit for the Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading is from the first book of Kings, chapter 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, as prophet in your place. And here ends the first reading.
we now sing the Messiah, uh, the Magnificat, sorry, the Messiah, um, which begins at the bottom of page 19. Please sit for the New Testament reading. The New Testament reading is from 2 Peter, chapter 1. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we have been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honour and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majesty glory, saying, This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Here ends the second reading.
We now sing the Nunc Dimittis on page 21. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of The Collect 
from the Sunday next before Lent. O Lord, who has taught us that all our doings without charity are nothing worth, send thy Holy Ghost and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the very bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whosoever liveth is counted dead before thee. Grant this for thine only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And together the third collect. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So please sit for the notices. Just one or two to point out on the back of the white pew sheet. The Ash Wednesday service this year is in Tilstock. Uh, it's at seven o'clock on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. And talking of Ash Wednesday, there's also the Falls Lent lunches and the Christian Aid Lent lunches to look forward to. The dates are also on the pew sheet. And on the 1st of March, the Friends of St. Orkman's are hosting a quiz and a hot pot supper. So do come and join us. Um, you can join up with a team. There'll be people looking for other people to join them. So um, Hilda is the person to contact. Her telephone number is there. And the other thing is the collation, I think it's called, of our new rector on the 10th of March. Um, we do need names just for catering purposes, so anyone who would like to come, there is a list at the back of the church to sign, so if you could do that. The anthem tonight, the choir are going to sing, Son of my soul, thou saviour dear. It's a hymn, it's in the hymn book, uh, number 601. Son of my soul, thou saviour dear.
Let us pray. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew, that we may love the way you love and do what you would do. Loving Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. And as we come to you this evening, we pray for our bishops, Michael and Sarah, for Reverend Sue, Reverend Jane, and Jane, our reader, and all who are helping take our services during the vacancy. We pray especially for Reverend Chris and his wife, Laura, and family, and the curate, Reverend Pippa White, coming to us in March. We pray for our church wardens, PCC, and all who have helped unstintingly over these past months. And we pray for King Charles and the royal family, as they have had special health issues at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all the building work and reordering that's been done so well for our architect and all who helped to oversee this work. Also for Alison in the Benefice Office and all those who help in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Frida and Alison, our link missionaries. We give thanks for their dedicated service far from home and pray for the success of the project they are engaged in. Frida working in theological education in Pakistan and reaching out internationally. And Alison in her work to improve maternal and infant nutrition in Kenya. Frida has asked us to pray especially for Pakistan elections that took place last Thursday. And we are hearing about the problems that they have there in the news now. She asks for peace and order. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of those who live in areas of war, for the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, for Gaza and Israel, and so many other parts of the war-torn world. We pray for justice and peace to reign, and pray for those working towards resolutions that hope may not diminish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who come into this church to sit quietly and pray, and for all those who've left prayers on our prayer board. Kathy Davis asks prayer for Emma's husband, Paul, and family, as Paul's father has passed away suddenly. For another Emma and Rose write, Dad, Daniel Winnicott, Windet, the best dad in the world. We miss you every day. And we pray for those who've asked us to pray on our church sick list. For Steve White, Oliver Knott, Harry, William and Alison Price's grandson, Frida Caulfield, Kenny, Len Allen, Pauline Watson, Kathy Davis, George Jones, Fergus, and Kirsty, Darren and Jane Arkley, and Isaac Morgan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have a special calling to teach and to support young people, both within the church and in our schools and community groups. Thank you for the skills of our doctors and nurses, those who work in the many fields of health care, for our community hospital and new medical centre, for a resolution concerning the civic centre. We pray especially regarding the rail strikes and the doctors' strikes and the general unrest at present in our country, asking you for guidance for all those who have these big decisions to make that affect so many people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, 
especially the families and friends of Margaret Ellen Speed, Amanda Jane Dodd, Brian Ferber, and Margaret Wally. And we pray too for those whose anniversaries of death come around at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in thy mercy, grant us safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at last through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our next hymn is number 79, Bright the Vision That Delighted, number 79. May the words I've chosen to read tonight be of help to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. We've heard about Elijah this morning and tonight, and uh, I'm sure he would have loved that beginning. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, when he was so down and depressed in our reading tonight. And probably most of us have had some time when we've felt very depressed and down. Nick Fawcett has written a short meditation about this. 
Was it worth carrying on? I couldn't help but wonder, for despite everything God had done, the countless signs he'd given, it seemed I was the last one left, the only one in all Israel ready to honour his name. I'd bounced back before from such moments, just when all had seemed hopeless, his power bringing fresh hope. But this time there seemed no grounds for such confidence. For though he'd humiliated their prophets, poured scorn on their gods, still my enemies pursued me. More determined than ever to do me in. So I took myself off and went into hiding, waiting for the inevitable end. And that's where he found me, the God who never lets go, calling me back onto my feet, back into active service. What could I do? After all the setbacks, the innumerable false dawns, it seemed pointless. Yet he was my one firm hope in an ever-shifting world. So I went, as he told me, up onto the mountain. And there I met him as never before. Not in the wind, not in the earthquake, nor in the fire. But in a soft and gentle whisper. Almost, you might call it, the sound of silence. It was a moment I never expected, but one I shall always treasure. For I realized God was telling me something special, something I so badly needed to hear. No need for signs and wonders this time. No call for displays of power to get the message home. He was speaking in the stillness, teaching me that though I might not see him, And though his voice may seem strangely silent, he'd be with me always, close by my side to my journey's end. I returned eagerly after that, heart singing, spirit soaring. And do you know what? I wasn't the last one, the only one serving the Lord. There were others, more than I had dared to dream, still loyal to his cause. I should have known, shouldn't I? Should have trusted he would not fail. Well, I know now, and I tell you this, even though I cry and hear no answer, even though I look and see no sign, I won't lose heart, still less give up. I'll take time to be still, to savour the quietness, and to rejoice that God is God. Let's just have a prayer. Gracious God, you do not always answer our prayers as we ask or work in the way we hope. Your purpose can be hard to fathom and your will difficult to understand so that we wonder at times if you have heard our prayer or care about our plight. At our lowest moments, we even question the point of praying at all. Yet you do answer, not simply through your word of old, not solely through the channels we lay down for you, but through your still small voice, your word even in the silence. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 188, Give Me the Wings of Faith to Rise. This tune was new to the choir. We've done our best to learn it, but we are far from note perfect, but we'll do our best. So number 188, and James will play the tune through first.
Please sit or kneel for our final prayer and blessing. And I'm sorry, I didn't know Jill was going to say the same prayer, but uh, I'll say it again anyway. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shades lengthen and the evening comes. The busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over. Then, Lord, in thy mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us and all who we've prayed for tonight, always. Amen. Our final hymn is number 701. We have a gospel to proclaim, something we should all remember and try and put into action. Number 701. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.